Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to a beginner's tutorial guide for the Clan Moors Skaven campaign for Total War Warhammer 2. So in this video I'll be going over a few things of sort of how to get the best start possible or a very good start for somebody who is a beginner player for Warhammer 2. I've done other tutorials as well guys, um, beginner guides on various Total War games so please check them out if that interests you. So, this is what the camping map looks like once you start off with Clan Moors. It gives you a little indication here of how they play. Skaven Underworld. Skaven settlements are not ordinarily visible to other races, appearing inside as uninhabited ruins. Heroes may scout ruins to see if they are truly abandoned. You can use this to your kind of your your effect, your, your positive kind of influence over the map. Other factions can't see where you are half the time unless they have somebody quite close in close proximity to your settlements. So you are hidden from most people. Basically it's the underground mechanic which they have in the game. Food. So Skaven factions require a stockpile of food. Each army consuming an amount of food per turn. Food may be gained from battles, from sacking settlements and from certain villains. So you have food and then you also have money. Probably both are as important to each other as you can possibly expect. You start off on 52 and you have different tiers. So if you go all the way down and you're starving, you have negative growth and leadership and public order. You have less loot, you have less income from raiding and everything else basically. And obviously you go up the higher scale of this, you get good growth, good public order and good leadership, which is plentiful food. And then you have growth then plus three. There are different things you can do in the campaign to get more food, which I'll go and explain in a moment. And finally, Skaven Corruption. The Skaven spread corruption where they settle, lowering public order over time, but giving additional uses of the Menace Below army. Ability which you can have within the uh, within, fort within local province. So the enemy below is a little ability which you have, which is quite useful as a Skaven. I use it to tie down enemies. I'll give you an example of it um, in this video when I get a chance. Uh, mission issued. Make it better. So they want to ensure that I construct a layer. Do that if you can because you're going to get 500 in your treasury off the bat. It's definitely worth doing it. And that's basically the starting sort of turn. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> so it's a starting turn. This is the information it gives you. You start off at your tech and you have Clan Moors here and Queek Head Taker. Now, Queek is a pretty decent legendary lord. You can see straight away he hates dwarves and greenskins. So he gets a plus 10 melee attack and weapon strength when fighting though. So by all means, throw him in against dwarves and greenskins. He's going to be quite good. And Nardwell's right claw. He gets minus 50% upkeep for storm vermin and clan rats in his army. So by all means, get the clan rats and storm vermin in his army. And he also has the army ability number of uses plus 2 for the menace below. These are quite good traits for him to start off with. I would definitely look to try and get some better armor and weapons and stuff over time for him. Try and buff him up as much as you can. Because even though he is a decent legendary lord, he does fail in comparison to other legendary lords within the game. Skills. So, I would be inclined to go down this sort of tree by here. Inspiring Presence. Get that aura up straight away. And then I would be looking to get your clan rats up. As best you can. You're going to be using lots and lots of clan rats at the start of this campaign. The first sort of 5 to 10 turns you're pretty much exclusively going to have clan rat armies. They are the bread and butter of your early army builds. Go for them. They are useless units to a certain extent. But you can use them effectively to tie down units and get bigger, more stronger units to come in and help win you the day. Get that up to level 3 for the leadership bonus and the melee attack. That will help a lot. Uh, Night Runners, you can get that later on in the campaign. Same with your Warp Fire Thrower. You do start off with one, which I'll show you in a sec, but um, I would ignore that initially. So, Pack Leader, and I'd probably go with uh, Respected and Feared to get your Weapon Strength for your Storm Vermin, Death Runners, and Plague Monks. Probably going to want to get some kind of synergy with those units. I would definitely recommend getting more Storm Vermin. They're going to be your sort of better elite units, and they'll eventually replace your Clam Rats. You've also got engineering skill, again, for your Doom Wheels, play Claw, Catapults, and war Lightning Cannons. The important thing to remember with Skaven is that they, <laughs> they are terrible in battle. But they do tend to come back. They flee easily, and they run back. 
They run again, they come back. They, they, they're they hard to pin down. They are numerous in number. They're not very strong in you know as individuals, but collectively you can sort of infest units. You know, you can surround them and mow them down, pin them down, and they are quite a useful army when you've got lots of them. You'll see right here, clan rats. Their only redeeming quality is meat shield. While unimpressive at causing damage, this unit is useful as a meat shield. Absorbing damage that would otherwise hurt a more useful or precious target. It even says it in the game. A more useful or precious target. They are rubbish units. But they are numerous in numbers. They got 9,000 you know, hit points. Isn't too bad. They don't have much else going for them. So that's why at least make them a little bit better. So they can last longer in battle. These by here though. Storm Vermin with Halberds. They are 10 times better. You only got to hover over it by here. You can see they have um, far superior HP, far superior armor and leadership and melee defense and weapon strength. They are a little bit slower than clan rats and that's about it. So storm vermin are units you're going to want to get in your army. You start off with a warp fire thrower. Try and keep this alive for as long as you can because it'll take you a while in the campaign to actually get more of these. They are... Damage dealers, anti-infantry, and obviously warp fire. So um, after being showered in unholy flood of unfurious flames, those fleeing in panic are the lucky ones. <laughs> Quite a useful unit. And then you have the rat ogres. Again, they are monstrous infantry, but they are armor. They have armor piercing. Going to be good against the elves early on. They have the frenzy ability. They have uh, decent hit points here, seven thousand. Can do quite a bit of damage. So they're sort of your key units. The three sort of starting units you get the storm vermin rat ogres warp fires keep them alive at all costs in Creek's army and get as many clan rats as you can off the bat you can recruit skaven slaves and clan rats skaven slaves are expendable they are rubbish if i can just pin this by here and show you exactly the same expendable meat shield they have poor leadership and that's why i probably recommend the clan rats more than skaven slaves because at least clan rats do have a little bit of armor. And you can see clearly, if I just hover over it, clan rats are actually better than everything. They do cost a bit more. They're 210 to 88. But, and their upkeep is obviously twice as much. But they are going to last longer in battle than Skaven Slaves. So I just ignore Skaven Slaves altogether in your campaign. Only if you've got very little money and you just want another unit to pin somebody down, get them. But otherwise, go with clan rats all the way. They will be the bread and butter. Straight away, you can upgrade your attack as well. You start off with Clan Moor's headquarters, which gives you your clan rats. To upgrade this, like I said, upgrade that straight away. Three turns, and then you get 500. So you're getting 500 back for spending 1,600. So you're making two thirds of that back near enough. Uh, sorry, you're only spending two thirds of what's required, really, to get the 500 back. Uh, if I can show you the building tree. To give you an idea of what to go for. So we've already established you know, clan rats and skaven slaves. And that's basically it. You get clan rat with spears, which I you know you, what you could do, you could get this, a clan pit, you get a bit of Skaven corruption and a little bit of income. Uh but then again the clan more headquarters is giving you far better income generated. Possibly if you, when you take your first settlement, perhaps go for this as a level one building get that corruption and clan rat with spears because they are going to replace then the regular clan rats you've got the tree you can get clan rat spears with shields that's going to help a hell of a lot especially against the elves so you want to go up that and then straight up here to get them and then later on then up here you get the clan armory you can get the storm vermin which you're going to want so you're going to go up that tree and get them it does require the construction of a cavern that's fine, because once you get that, you're going to be sort of, you know, one third of the way through the campaign, probably, by the time you get up to there. You're probably going to have a few settlements by this point, a little bit of money, hopefully. And you're going to want to get Storm Vermin, and just replace all of your clan rats with Storm Vermin, where applicable, basically. Other units to keep aware of here. Death Globe, Bombardiers, decent missile units here. Warp Fire Throw, I've already gone through that, going to want to keep them. You can get Plague Claw Catapult, quite a useful catapult. Plague Monks, definitely worth getting a couple of them in your army. 
Rat Ogres are decent. Like I said, they have the armor piercing, which is going to be good against dwarves. It's going to be good against elves. Go up to the top here. Hell Pit Abomination. Get that. It has regeneration. It causes terror. <laughs> Too horrible to die. 12,000 hit points. Just, just get it. Do you know what I mean? Get that as soon as you can. And then you also have um, the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers. And the Doom Wheel. I love the Doom Wheel. You actually, you actually have the Doom Wheel as a starter unit for, I think it's the Clan Pestilence or Clan Rictus. is one of those factions. And it's such a good unit to have. Um, obviously, anything sort of in your sort of tier 4 or 5 is going to be so much better than your, your basic Clan Rats. You don't get much income from these builds, but every building you have does give a small income. 80, 80, 80. Pretty much every building. 60, 60, 60, 40. So basically, just build as much as you can because you're going to get stuff from it. And try and get that corruption up as best you can as well. You'll see here that we've got five turns until surplus. Our corruption is 10% and it's gone up by four, which is good. And we are making 2,000 a turn currently. If I show you technologies at the moment, we haven't got anything unlocked. We won't until we actually start unlocking some of these like armories and stuff, start building some of the stuff in our settlement. So our technology, as you can imagine, Skaven are behind everybody else. They're not the smartest of rats. But once they're able to sort of get themselves up and running, they do get some good stuff here. Ambush success is really good because you're going to be using ambush quite a lot. Loyalty for new recruits. Camping map movement. Um, what else have we got here? The menace below is going to be useful. That plus 10 leadership when, under, when laying siege is going to be very good for you. When you're on the offensive, your leadership... Well, the leadership in the Skaven isn't that good to start with. So get anything that's going to give you a bonus in leadership is going to be good. Melee attack and charge bonus again for clan rats is going to be good early on. An armor for clan rats is going to be good early on. So lots of decent stuff here. Little little trinkets that are going to help you out throughout the campaign. That's the way you've got to look at this technology tree. But it'll take you a few turns before you're up and running with that. As far as diplomacy goes, this is how things start off for you. So you've got clan molder. Who are down here. If you've seen my Lizardmen campaign, you know that clan molder and clan mordkin are both down on this coastline by here. And with my Lizardmen campaign, I said you're going to come down this coastline and try and smash them as best you can. In reverse order, really, with um, with Clan Moors, you're going to be trying to take out the High Elves early on and go in around and then towards the Lizards that way instead. So, Clan Mordor, Clan Mordkin, you can't trade with them currently. Clan Mordkin and Mordor are actually defensive allies. You want to try and get on the act with these uh, clans. Non-aggression pact, if you can get money out of them. No, no. Yeah, that's great. If not, don't worry. Just try and get the non-aggressions. Which I've got. Clan Mordkin. Same kind of deal. Non-aggression pact. And basically, everybody else is going to hate you. No matter what. Because people just don't like the Skaven. That's what I've come to find in these campaigns. Nobody likes Skaven, apart from other Skaven. And even then, they can be treacherous little bastards. So, people are not going to like you. That's fine. Stay with your kin to start off with. Just be friends with the other uh, clans. They act as a nice buffer for the Lizardmen. Because the Lizardmen, if you've got you know, a pretty high tier Lizardmen army coming from over here, trouncing their way down here and up towards you, that's not going to be a very good situation, is it? So, try and get yourself as strong as you can early on. I could have actually got some trade with Latlan here, but I don't even know if they'll take it. The options there, I mean, they are at war with our High Elves um, faction that we're at war with, so it could be possible, but I doubt very much that it's worth going for it. And then we have a battle on our hands. So they only have five to start off with. We have nine, so it's worth fighting this battle straight away. And this is amazing here, so ambush. One of the best things with the Skaven, they are able to ambush armies pretty much all the time this is their faction ability they can just go in attack them and you're given the ambush stance this is where food is important i can summon additional clan rat units here increase number of uses so if i go up by here you'll notice the food changes if i put loads in i'm using all the food we got basically to do that not even worth doing that just keep it on the base number of four they start off with two as a base, but Queek Head Taker has two additional ones as per his ability, which is really good. That's why I said it's a such a good ability early on for Queek. 
So he's basically got an army of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, what's it, 8 or 9. He's actually got another 4 over there, so take the army number with a pinch of salt because he will have a lot more. I'm going to actually fight this battle. Only because I think it's a good tutorial of, of sort of how to show you how to use clamors effectively and, and how how you're going to sort of use them early on in this campaign. We're only up against five units of elves here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time in this battle. I'm going to go through it bit by bit, unit by unit, of what I think you should be looking to try and do in your battles and clamors. Once you win this battle against Fortress of Dawn, you proceed towards their, their main settlement. You can, you can start so close to the enemy lines because of these ambush battles as well. So I can basically put my clan rats kind of either side here. So I can grab two clan rats and just stick them like so. I'm going to group them up as one. I've got two more clan rats. I'm going to group them up as group two. Okay. They are lords at the front. So I'm going to put Queek. Uh, we'll put him just down on the cliff by here. You can run in from there. My two storm vermin. We'll put them around like so. And then we've got my warp fire thrower. Which is a very good unit. Uh, yeah, it should be okay by here. If I zoom in and show you what they look like. Quite an effective little unit. Look like a bunch of little dafties, don't they? But they are quite effective, these warp fire throwers. And then we've got some rat ogres then. Which I will... Start off in the tree line, and we'll see how it goes. 45 seconds by here till the menace below, and I'll show you how the menace below can be used effectively. So, to start off with, I'm just going to issue some attack orders to group one, group two, and group three. I'll bring Queek in, and I'll also bring in my warp fire thrower. So, I'm basically attacking with everybody and the rat ogres. I'll just get them to flank around and go at the back by here. I'm going to crash in, and you'll see a lot of my troops via the red triangles. Clan rats are not that good against spearmen, but they're going to pin them down until I get better units in there, such as storm vermin. And this is where the menace below could be used effectively. I can click on it, and I can spawn more units in. So say now this unit's going to escape. Menace below, I spawn it. More clan rats. Stop the archers from escaping. Get them pinned down with other clan rats. I'm basically using two clan rats to pin down this archer unit. It's going to be quite effective doing it that way. Probably best to bring Queek into battle now. Got their lord by here. Warp fire thrower doing its thing. Quite effective. Just going to turn him around. I'm going to bring Queek in against their lord because it's going to be going to be pretty good against their lord. You can see the green triangle is quite effective against them. We're mopping up over here now. Doing well. They're going to turn around there. And the good thing is any units that run away, obviously rats don't really have cavalry as such, but you can use your menace below to act as that. So if I want to chase off any kind of troops that I'm too far away from, I can get the menace below. I can spawn them in by here, for example. You're in a good position to ambush these. Maybe get a few more kills, take a few of them away. If I want to try and eliminate them completely from the campaign map, I can do that. Gonna charge them all in. And you can see, this spearman unit is completely surrounded by clan rats now and storm booming. Doesn't stand a chance. I can use these other clan rats to chase down the archers. We established earlier that the clan rats are fairly fast. If I bring up my stats again, clan rats. Uh, 37 or so. A little bit faster than Storm Vermin. And most of the other ones are fairly quick as well. Just to give you an idea. So my Lord is winning slightly. I could bring in another Menace below if I want to. Will I bring another one in? I think I will. Let's bring this one in though. Let's bring him in at the back by here. I'll actually form him in right by there. And they go charging in, take up the spears, and they're completely and utterly surrounded. And that's kind of what you want to do in these kind of these kind of battlefields. So let me show you the map by here. This sort of area was the actual ambush zone. 
We had them surrounding all sides, and then whenever a unit sort of peeled off, menace below, chase them off, pin them down, keep them sort of focused, and that's that's the gist. Decisive victory there. The ambush battles do help a hell of a lot. I only lost 136, and again, you can see Storm Vermin only took a little bit of damage. Creek took a little bit of damage there as well. I could have not perhaps not threw him in like I did then, but obviously I was showing you, trying to show you how to fight with this army and with Creek himself. But that's the gist of it with Clamors. You you pin them down. You take out the elves by here now. Up to you what you want to do. Do you want a bit of money? Up to you. You've already gained five food. 57 plus five. I could be a bit greedy and get plus four, uh, plus two food as well. On top of that. Or I go for the unit replenishment. I'm happy to go with the food. Get that extra little bit of food. The plus seven. Enemies killed in battle. Because when I get to 61, which is only two away, I get a much more positive effect again of 10 growth plus one public order and plus five leadership in my own or allied territory. I didn't quite chase them off, but I can run and chase them off again. So like I said, inspiring presence. We're going to go to that tree. We're going to get pack leaders. We're going to get... Uh, Where's it gone? Respected and feared as well to the storm vermin units that I have. I just buff them up as best we can early on. We'll chase down this army here. I'm not going to fight this. We're just going to auto. An easy win. I've lost no units. I've lost no troops at all. I got one food, so I will enslave again. Just to get me plus 10. And I'll actually gain a talisman as well. Rival high talisman, which lowers the enemy's melee attack. It's going to be quite useful. Yes, yes. Quick, so again, I can go down this troop, uh, this line. Let's get the melee attack up for clan rats. And there we go. After basically fighting one battle, that has happened. I can force march him back into my territory, so I can get that replenishment back up, and I'll start thinking about going for dawn, uh, dawn's light, which. Only has five units there, so I'm gonna wanna attack as soon as I can. Get in there, attack them. And when you're fighting siege battles, that um, menace below is very useful for getting inside the enemy settlements, pinning down archer units, stuff like that, while you're making your approach via the walls. So definitely worth doing that um, as well. There are quite a diverse faction, I suppose. They they got lots of throwaway units, so don't be scared of chucking units away unless they are, of course. Your higher tier stuff like rat ogres and warp fire throwers. You want to keep your storm vermin alive, but clan rats, you can get them easily. Chuck them away by all means. Once you're taking Dawn's Light, you don't want to move down. Scrag Hole and Tor Sunpadar are there. Tor Sunpadar is going to be a lot harder to take. It's a wall settlement with more troops. You're going to want to have a full stack at least. Possibly even try and raid and try and get them to come out at you and ambush them in the field. That's what you're going to want to do. Another important tip, don't auto-resolve battles unless it's like that one I just showed you where it's just no point fighting it because the Skaven units auto-resolve doesn't go so well in these campaigns. You're going to want to try and um, fight as many battles manually as you can and try and keep as many units alive as you can because Skaven units just don't do well in auto-resolve, uh, unfortunately. I will probably move up next, turn to 61, which will be pretty good. We've got plus 10 on here now, which is good. And then, look at this. I, would, I wouldn't bother going up here with the Tomb Kings and stuff. Just not ready for that yet. You're just going to circle around the coast. Take these guys out as best as you can. We already have the capital of Uotech. Take Dawn's Light and Scrag Hole. You'll have a full settlement by here. Try and limit the High Elves as best you can. Thorsandar, maybe even go down here. And wipe out the, the high elves down here. Meet up with the clan buddies. Maybe even merge as a faction. Or take them out if you want to backstab them. Because let's be honest. You are Skaven. You are rats. Backstabbing is in your nature. So don't be don't be afraid to do that. Because nobody's going to like you anyway. Some of these settlements you're going to want to take. Because they are resource site weapons. They have warp stones. Which is what you're going to want. As part of the vortex. You need to collect warp stones as much as you can. It works exactly the same way as what the lizardmen do. With the vortex as well you just go up get your warp stones you fight some battles other armies are going to appear from chaos throughout the campaign make sure that you're prepared as best you can and your settlements are as upgraded as best as you can whenever you do this and just you know 
dig in, fight hard, and eventually you will do well. We'll end turn here, just to see what happens in the next end of turn phase. I mean, we are making 2,000 a turn, which isn't too bad. And of course, clan rats don't cost an awful lot. But something you have to be aware of as well is the food. Our food's quite good at the moment, but the moment I start recruiting more and more troops, the harder it's going to be for me. So if I come out of this by here now, I could go to stalking, I can ambush, I can raid, which is going to help as well. Um, and also you're immune to attrition when you do that, and you do generate some more food. So if you're desperate for food, it's worth doing that. I can encamp, which enables uh, replenishment. I need 50% camping map movement range to do that. So if I come down here, I can go as far as this area by here. Although I've made a mistake. Because what I should have done, I should have come out of Force March, which is what I've done. So my mistake there. But you'll see I'm in stalking mode now. Chance ambushing and any enemy army this force attacks. Stalking is such a useful tool to have. Anybody that runs out against us will be caught up in the stalking here. We've encountered the Man Blight tribe, which would be probably over here, I would assume, or somewhere. Man Blight tribe tend to go along the path by here, by the Golden Tower, end up fighting um, the Lizardmen eventually, so be wary of them in this campaign as well. You'll see Clan Mulder actually likes me now. Can't do much else with them. Could ask him for money. Sometimes it's worth doing that. And that's pretty much it for this turn. So we'll see what happens this turn now. See whether an army gets raised at dawn's light. And then we can go and attack them. Sometimes the AI will raise the army, sometimes they won't. Don't forget they have two settlements, they could be down here doing something. We're okay to go and attack it. We're diving in. You can see they've been caught at sea. So bath power is in my favour. So if I auto resolve here, you'll see that I won. But we did lose quite a few troops here. I have kept my all my units intact, luckily. The the, the death toll's been spread evenly. But what you've got to remember is this is a legendary lord who's now a rank four. Or, or rank 3 on his way to rank 4, with two Storm Vermin, which are decent units, two good starter units, and a bunch of throwaway units, outnumbering only five units here. And he's still lost nearly 50% of his troops, so be aware of the auto resolve. Will you not fear and death? this is another thing I want to show you as well. You can sack for a bit of money, a bit of replenishment, you can raise to the ground for a little bit of food, a little bit of money. Or when you occupy, I can occupy at level 1, I can go in for level 2, I can have it as a rank 3 building straight away if I wanted to. If I keep it at level 1, it's going to be up there. I can go in as a rank 2 though. And it stays pretty positive. So I'm going to go in and loot and occupy. Line of sight's increased by 50%. Another good follower. Mission successful. I've constructed that layer. I got plus 500. He's gained a talisman here. Fire resistance plus 30%. Excellent. Another mission has been issued to maintain control of a province, which is what we're going to go for. When we get down here and take Scraghole, we'll get the whole province and get another 2,000 plus some warp stones as well. And let's have a look at what we got now. Dawn's Light, rank 2. I've got two buildings here. I can repair this for income and growth. It only costs 304. Yes, please. We'll do that. I have a building slot free now, so I can either go for uh, some alarmed tunnel. So for a bit of income, better garrison here. A bit of corruption. I can go for more income again. I can go for pretty much corruption and stuff here. Or if I want to just go for my troops and get some night runners now if I wanted to. Basically the choice is mine wherever I want to go. I can go with the clan pit now if I want to get the speared variant of what I've been using, the clan rats. But I think what I'll do to start things off, as it's only just been taken, I'll go for the corruption and public order get that in straight away I can hold up here for a turn I'm gonna go and give myself more in this my clan rats now if you look at them they are much better with a little green boof uh, buffs or rather in leadership a melee attack is gonna help a lot 
especially in these early battles. And I can just go and hold up here now. Start recruiting. I can get my Skaven Slaves. Skaven Slaves with Spears or Clan Rats. Just get the Clan Rats in. It's what you're going to be using early on. But when you do recruit, be aware you are going to cost yourself food in the long run. Try not to overdo your army size too much. And that's basically it, guys. That's the sort of the starting guide. So you defeat the Helves, you, you hole up, push down, go around the coastline. And, and what you're trying to do is take all of the southern jungle, jungle of the coast, work your way up through the other clans, either by confederacy or by annihilating them until you're the dominant clan here. And you're pushing up and taking out the lizard men as best as you can. You're going to get higher tier units later on. But as you can see in this start that I've done now, I've got 8,000 treasury with 2,000 coming in. And it's in a pretty comfortable position. To be fair, I got a little bit lucky for, considering that the elves are out here at sea for some reason. I think they've gone to get this mysterious island by here and get a bit of income. But I've taken the opportunity. That's what you've got to do with Skaven. You've got to go sniff out the opportunities and take them as best as you can. Thank you for watching, guys. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Until next time, goodbye.